Are you listening to this episode on Himalaya? If you are, congratulations, because you're already using the best new podcast app out there. If you're not, well, you're a loser and missing out, so get it together. Uh, Whether you're a podcaster or a fan, Himalaya is designed with you in mind and has a ton of cool new features like curated shareable playlists and collections made just for you, along with personalized recommendations to help with content discovery. And the best part is, it's super easy to use. It's definitely my favorite listening app, and I'm sure it will be yours too. So do yourself a favor and download Himalaya today, and be sure to follow my show, Worst Firsts, once you're there. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Worst First. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. We have so many amazing, over a thousand incredible reviews from you guys, and we are one of the top comedy podcasts. Thank you so much. I love you guys. I can't thank you enough. Um, Today we have an incredible guest, and I am particularly excited about this one because you guys know how obsessed I am with dogs. I go up to dogs and ask them their names all the time, and the owners look at me like I'm crazy. Uh, It's my favorite thing to do. What is your name? Um, And so we have Caesar Milan here today. Thank you, thank you. Look, see, even Nina's Uh, excited. Yeah, she's super excited. Yay, Nina's here. Okay, so it's so funny because when Caesar (laughs) walked in, Nina was just barking and so scared of everybody. And it was so interesting to me because you said just ignore her. Ignore the behavior. Ignore the behavior. Nobody likes to ignore the dog, the spirit of a dog, the heart of a dog, the name of a dog. What you have to learn to ignore is the behavior that you don't like. Just like you're ignoring people, you know, I'm pretty sure uh, among husbands and wife, they ignore certain behavior. Yes. And nobody has a problem ignoring their husband, Uh but people have a problem ignoring the dog. But you're not ignoring ignoring the dog, you're ignoring the behavior okay. that the dog is doing at that time, especially when the na- when the behavior is not ideal for the whole uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, when, when he walked in, Nina was barking and she was nervous. And, you know, most people's intuition is to get down and kind of coax the dog over to them. And he was like, no, 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 don't do that. Let her come to you, you know, because and she did out of curiosity. She, she walked over and started sniffing people. And it was so interesting to me because usually she barks like crazy and she was very calm when you were here. So yeah, the only thing is that's not into intuition intuition actually leads you to the right thing yeah that's a bad habit so most right. people have a bad habit to lean to a dog that is exhibiting nervousness so right. they feel they feel they feel sorry for the dog yeah we're like let me make you feel better come closer to me yeah to that's the how it sounds yeah, yeah, to a dog. Yeah, yes yeah, yeah. It, intuition is actually great you uh-huh. know what i mean but most people don't use intuition they just use a bad habit Right. So yeah. if your dog is barking at people when people come into the house and is scared, you should tell those people to not, you know, not let the not, no touch, not try no to go talk to the dog. no eye contact. So the right thing to do yes. yeah, is, is is definitely to practice no touch, no talk, no eye contact. In her case, she was practicing she was uh barking saying I'm nervous about uh-huh. you guys being here. Right. So they're very honest to you know to how they, how they to how they feel. Yeah. You know, dogs don't know how to hide behind the truth. So the human have to understand, okay, she's barking because she's nervous. So how do I help? No touch, no talk, no eye contact. Most people touch dog eye contact. Right. Right. Oh my God, what's your dog name? Can I pet her? Right. Oh, right. give her a hug. Right. Give her, I want to hold that. her. I want to hold her. Yeah. But, but if you do that at that time, oh my God, look you're going right to nurture the behavior. Uh-huh. Do you see it? So this way I am. Um, I am become a source of scent more more than a source of sound, sight, or touch. Right. So the nose of a dog controls sixty percent of the brain reaction. So their nose is your eyes. So if the marketing people and all propaganda people cannot reach your eyes, you won't buy anything. Wow. So you want to sell to the dog through their nose. That's so why let them scent smell is, you. That's why I say no touch, no talk, no eye contact. Look how she's to already you. coming to you, which like allows this just... self esteem. So now she okay. So this human. It's allowing me to be a dog, Uh nose, eyes, ears, and that makes me feel safe, and that makes me trust them. So if I trust them, and then my self-esteem is high. See, so now I become a source of trust. So what do you want in a relationship? Trust, respect, love. Uh huh. You see it? So when a dog doesn't trust himself and you give affection, then love becomes a toxic. Wow. Love is a healer, not a toxic, but if you give it at the wrong time, it's like mama's boys, right? Right, so, when you honor the bad behavior by comforting people. It just if you nurture people's weaknesses, yeah. and then you are actually not being toxic about it. Right. You know what I mean? And Versus then they're like, ooh, if, I'm at, if I act bad, then I get love. And you're like, ooh, that's not good. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh, how funny. She's like, she totally got up off my lap, and now she's being she's curious exploring. and doing weird dog things. Yeah. 
she's very look. She's, she's very curious now, yeah. and she normally be so scared and sit on yeah. my lap usually yeah. most of the time. And then towards the very end, sometimes she says hi to the guests. But people always ask me, like, has she been abused? I'm like, no, she's never been abused. She's just a very timid dog until she gets to know no, you. No, no, no. So yeah. this is what you have to understand. So in a pack of dogs, mm -hmm. all right, it's three positions. Back of the pack, very sensitive, she is. Mm -hmm. Middle of the pack, happy-go-lucky. Mm -hmm. And then the front of the pack. Because you guys' energy is so overwhelming, mm -hmm. you you guys are going to overwhelm a back-of-the-pack dog. So right. the right dogs for you guys is middle of the pack. Right. Because you guys is like... All yeah. over the place, ah, yes. We're crazy, yeah. Almost neurotic, right? Yeah, yeah. So totally a happy-go-lucky dog uh -huh. will be ideal for your lifestyle. Yeah. A back-of-the-pack dog it becomes very overwhelmed. Yeah, she does. So sensitive dogs. So this is a dog perfect for people with seizures, people with like really neurological problems that yeah. born that way. Yeah. She's perfect because she wow. will be able to let them know before the seizure comes. Really? That's right. So the dachshund. It's not the it's not the breed. Oh, it's the it, type of dog. Oh. So just like in any race of yeah. humans, you have a back of the pack guys, middle of the pack guys, the front of the pack guys. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Say so no matter the race, so you are born to feel a position in the pack. Wow. So in a pack of dogs, regardless of the breed, they all have back of the pack, middle of the pack, front of the pack. Uh -huh. That's what called that's that's what it's called a family. Whoa. The back of the pack are the most sensitive. This is the one they alert the pack of pending danger. Wow. The middle of the pack, those are the guys that like the HR. Uh -huh. they, and they make sure the front of the pack gets along with the back of the pack. Because uh -huh. the front of the pack is direction and protection. Right, That's right. That's the pack leader. Right, right. So in the police world, uh, you know, the police dogs, <laughs> they only pick front of the pack. They don't pick middle of the pack. Right. Those are the CNI dogs. Wow. So can a German Shepherd be a, 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 a service dog? Of course. Uh -huh. But it has to be a middle of the pack. Wow. Can it be a police dog? Yes, it has to be a front of the pack. Wow. And then how do you figure out, like, what oh. age of dogs do you figure out? As what? soon as they're born. You can tell what, what, oh my God, what yes. position yeah, they yeah, are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they sell you, pick of the litter. Wow. Pet quality, run of the litter. See, you wow. hear these terms in a different way. Yeah. So the pick of the litter can be a show dog because uh -huh. it's the most confident. Right. There you go. Yeah. Front of the pack. This is so, how did you learn so much about dogs. Did you just, were you younger? When you were younger, you just were like, I love dogs and I'm just going to learn everything I can about You know about how Jane Goodall understands like, chimpanzees? Yes. Well, I grew up similar to, I mean, she went to Africa to to, uh, to be with them. Uh -huh. I grew up in a farm in Mexico uh -huh. and my grandfather knew animals very well and my yeah. father knew animals very well. So it's, it's almost like a, a tradition for us to understand or to be respectful to nature in this way. Right. So that we become more like... Uh, watching you know how they behave but before we actually give them direction wow you know what i mean so yeah. that's pretty so much you grew up all around animals and you just goats study. i have goats at the ranch hopefully one day you guys come yes, we have emus we come. have horses we have uh every single sp you know all the species that i can get in there and they all have trust respect and uh -huh. love regardless uh -huh. of the species we connect the same way yeah they all look for trust respect love right you know so and so so have you ever met an animal where you couldn't read them and you were like, ooh, this, and been in a, a dangerous situation? With animals, because I work, you know, with aggressive dogs, um, sometimes my timing is off, sometimes mm -hmm. my reading is mm -hmm. off. I still get re re I still get to rehabilitate them, mm -hmm. but uh, that to me was a learning moment, you know. So have I been bitten by dogs? Yes, severely. Bad. No, no. Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm. You still have no. You have yeah. no fingers missing. It's not like God, I'm a, I don't see you know, any scars. Torero, matador. You know, the the bullfighting guys. Those yeah. guys get hurt. Right, right, right. You know right, what I mean? So right. Their timing is off. Right. And so my if my timing is off. I never got like surgery or anything like that. Wow. I never stopped. Like no. And I work with the most severe cases in America. In aggressive. And aggressive. Yeah. yeah Rottweilers. Pit not that the Rottweilers and the pit bulls are the breed for destiny. Are the most powerful. Right. Okay. Right. So not everybody can be an MMA. It has to be a powerful guy. Right. You know what I mean? Not because he's a certain race, he can be an MMA fighter. Uh -huh. It's just have to be him a powerful guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So Petey from the Little Rascals was a pit bull. So mm -hmm. he became an actor. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 Makes so sense. so it's not the breed. I'm uh -huh. just saying, as a breed, they're definitely uh, powerful. Right. You know? Right. Once you get yeah. in their jaws, it's kind of like hard. Yeah, well, it's and like a, a car accident. You know, you can get hurt by a Fiat, but if you get hurt by a Hummer, it's different. It's, yeah. You see what I'm it's saying? So intense. the Fiat is something like this. Yeah. And then, and a, a Fiat. and a oh Rottweiler is something. You know, I, I love, but bite is a bite. It's just yeah, bite You know is what I mean? Bite. So yeah. most people, are, I think, oh, Rottweiler, Pitbull, German Shepherd are the most uh, dangerous. No, what makes them dangerous is who raised the dog. Right. Right, yeah. exactly. Wow, so that's so incredible. So, what are what's some of the like? Nar what are the what's a crazy story you can tell me about some of your experiences with these animals? 
All of them. I, yeah, I mean, you're like, I have the, the funny part is I um, I grew up uh, watching Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. Mm-hmm. And do you, that makes you sense. Know about Lassie. It? Lassie. I love and Rin Tin Tin. Lassie. Yes. So I thought that every dog in America was just like Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. Wow. So I came to America thinking that everybody in America had a dog just like Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. So I wanted to learn. Uh, I wanted to learn from the best. So I wanted to learn from the people who train last year in Tintin. Then then when I jumped the border and, and I started working with, uh, you know, with people, uh, I saw that none of the dogs actually behave like last year in Tintin. They behave, you wow. know, very uh, neurotic, very oh. aggressive, very fearful, very frustrated. They were bored out of their mind. People, got, when they walked them on, on the street, they were being dragged by. So that's when I said, you know what? I'm not going to train dogs. Yeah. I'm going to train people. And then later... The LA Times came and, and followed me around, and then they say, so what would you like to do next? By then, you know, Nicolas Cage was my client, Ben wow. Diesel was my client, Jaden Will Smith was my client. So I said, well, what would you like to do next? Well, I would like to have a TV show, a radio show, because I think people should learn, you know, dog psychology and energy. Mm-hmm. And so she wrote it down in the newspaper, and uh, the newspaper came on, came on a Sunday, but Monday was a line of producers outside my compound in South Central at that time. And and that's how the show was born. That's I mean, it's, so it's a crazy be- story. You so know? beautiful and and <clears throat> and organic. You just followed your passions, and then they led you to where you wanted to be. I wanted to be a dog trainer, and I, I ended up becoming that. a human trainer. You are a human. I train. Trainer. I train humans. You know, because there's three kinds of humans in the dog world. You love dogs. You are afraid of dogs, or you're afraid of dogs. I'm sorry. You love dogs. You're afraid of dogs, or you don't like dogs. Uh-huh. Right. So I get to work with all of them because you know people who are afraid of dogs need help. Yeah, why? Are, like, it's so I get some people are afraid of dogs, even little dogs. It's so weird to me. I'm like, traumatic what? experience. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you know the, uh, how your parents tell you how to be. Yeah, you know, in a sensitive moment of your life. Sometimes you inherit fear. Yeah, I know a lot of people. They, they, their parents and uh, were afraid of dogs, and they inherit it. It's uh-huh. like you can inherit you know sicknesses, yes. and emotional traps, and and a spiritual traps. So you can inherit a lot of stuff. So I get to work with a lot of people who are afraid of dogs. They don't have dogs, but they because they live among a society, they have dogs. They need to learn how to control their energy it's not about controlling the dog right because these right. people need to control their energy their reaction to it yeah because yeah. as soon as they see a dog at 20 feet away they start sweating and so that brings the animal to them because the dog's like ooh, ooh yeah. yeah negative energy close to me right they can you know sense what i mean it. so they want to they want to make sure that their human is mm-hmm. safe mm-hmm. And, and, that, and that human is not near their humans and then it's humans who don't like animals you know? i don't get those people how do you hang out with people like that? If I meet a person who doesn't like an animal, I'm like, get away from me. I don't like you. Like, but they're my clients. They're not my friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, how do you deal with that? Well, because, I don't like animals. Well, you have to help okay, humans Satan. To, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to raise empathy and compassion. Right. right? So, so with them, you know, with the dog lovers, uh, empathy and compassion is high. It's just they're, they don't do it at the right time. Right. Right. But with these people, empathy and compassion is low. So for me, Better Human, Better Planet is about how can I help all this human understand how to balance their, 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 their energy so they're all good to people. Wow. Because you don't want to live with fear, number one. You don't want to live with hate. No. You know, and people who love dogs, they, wanna, they, wanna, they have to learn how to love in a balanced way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because my clients are dog lovers. I'm obsessed with dogs. I need to calm down. Like I see a dog and I'm like, ah, I love dogs. And like I'm that person. But you can share that at the right time. Yeah. Like, that, that energy is perfect yeah. if you're doing agility. Yeah. So if your dog is doing agility, yeah, go, 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 go. Yeah. You can go crazy because yeah. the dog is going up 100 miles an hour. Right. But for just opening the door, yeah. that energy is not ideal because then the dog learned to jump on people. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So then the human said, well, my human teach me to jump on them. Because they're excited. Every yeah. time they open the door. So to me, open the door means jump. go crazy. Yeah. You see, yeah. so it becomes a ritual of going crazy every time they re- they hear the doorbell, knock on the door, or opening the door. Yeah. So that then you condition the brain that that's that's how you want to greet people. I know. I'm so bad because I they get so excited when I come home, and then I almost reward the excitement, which isn't good. Almost always. Always, I kind of. <laughs> I always reward it. My husband's so mad at me because, uh, you know, and guys, Caesar's gonna come work with us this weekend, so I'm so excited. You have to stay tuned for that on his YouTube channel. Well, your, your YouTube channel is is Caesar. Mal- Milan. Caesar Milan. So yes. YouTube.com slash Caesar Milan. Caesar Milan yes. So stay tuned for that because he's actually coming to our home in Calabasas. He's going to work with Nina and Wiki. I have a 15-year-old Yorkie too. What happened to your bird? 
I have okay, so I have two birds. I have a, I have a pair. No, I never found oh, Sparky. I know because I let him outside and he flew. Uh, he yeah. flew off. That was the worst day. I was so depressed. But then a girl in my neighborhood actually, I put signs up saying that the parakeet was missing, and her grandmother had passed away and had a, oh, yeah, yeah. a parakeet yeah. that was by itself, and he was already attacked by a hawk, so yeah. he can't fly. Yeah. But she was like, I don't know what to do with this bird. Will you take him? So I rescued him, mm. adopted him, and mm. now him and the, my other bird oh, are best beautiful. friends. So yeah. that's nice. But yeah. I'm also really sad about Sparky. I've learned my lesson. I don't take them outside anymore. I was just trying to be, you know, like, oh, I want to give him a bird. I want to mm-hmm. give him freedom yeah. and that kind of thing. And he was, oh, since he, I've had him had him for two years and he would always stay with me. Mm-hmm. And he was great with the dogs. He would sit on the dogs and everything. And just something must have got him excited. And he just, instinct, just just gone and, uh, and didn't come back. But so, so you can do that because I have a friend, uh, Chandler Berman, who can teach you how to, how to. Keep him out with you outside. Well, his birds fly and come back. Wow. Just like my dogs go and come back and yeah. my horses go and come back and my goats go and come back. I don't understand birds as much as he does. So right, right. You I him? want to meet the bird man. Yeah, you bird should. Bird man. It's yeah. just the rapper. I'm Chand like, oh, that guy. That's weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> His name uh, is Chan the Birdman. I <laughs> Chan the bird He's from man. Vietnam, yeah. Oh wow, mm-hmm. that's so cool. Yeah, no, we were we want to get like a parrot or something. Yes, so I have a macaw be... by the way. You Her name is Rio. Do does she talk? Yes. Oh, she I dances love... as well. Oh my yeah. god, see, that's what I want. And then there's like I I love the parakeets. They're great. They're they're great like easy pets. Yeah. You know, because they're and they're you know they'll sit yeah. on they'll yeah. sit on my shoulder, walk around the house, but they don't really talk or yeah, do anything. No. So but I like how do. they walk. Yeah. yeah, they do walk really funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. They do, and they they love each other. So that's always really nice. I yeah. I want so. So many and I love animals. I want a farm. I would my dream would be to have goats, horses, pigs, cows, like all of it. There will be you have, you gotta you come have to my all ranch. Of that. Yeah. yeah, we have oh you have to come because we have we have a little bit of everything. It's forty three acres. We have a beautiful temple. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. god, you have to come. So you're yeah. up every morning, what, five AM to go up? Oh yeah. I mean I'm a farm guy, so that stays wow. in my clock. Yes. That sticks in here. And you have to go feed the pigs. Feed the horses. You, I don't do feed everything. them first. Yeah, uh, I exercise them first. Okay. You know what I mean. At, okay. Uh, uh, naturally, they have to move before they eat. The pigs. You're like, get on the treadmill, Everybody. pigs. Come on. Some <laughs> pigs, yeah. Some pigs, yeah. This pig needs to. This pig's on Weight Watchers and a Weight Watchers <laughs> program. Oh my God, that's so fun. So you, so you just keep all the animals together and they're all. We friends. go for a nice pack walk together. Yeah. <sighs> Yes, exactly. Like Everybody comes. All the animals. All the animals. The horses. The horse. The goats. The, the goats. Those are easy. The llamas. The, the alpacas. Those are easy. It's when you bring the ducks and the and the chickens and all of that stuff because they don't walk as fast, so they have to be carried by the llamas and the alpacas. And then when we do like when they get tired, that's when we let the ducks and the chickens walk. Oh my god! Otherwise, just... <laughs> they're being carried. It's like feels like farm in Mexico, you know, where you always see people carrying chickens and stuff like that. <gasps> so it feels like that. Wow! I'm just imagining the beginning of Ace Ventura and you just like uh, right, walking right. on the. Oh, all the animals like an the, elephant walking behind the, you like everybody them. wow so you've gotten them all to be friends that's family. so yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. a farm is a family so you have different species in one area you know uh-huh. what I mean yes and no leashes everybody's free no right? no some, some of them they do some because be they, you know especially the one they like to graze yeah because you know um uh, the the alpacas and the and the llamas and the and the and the goats they they want to graze as as they walk oh. so it would be like the most boring freaking just like walk, walk ever. stop walk yeah. stop walk stop so oh, I want to do boy. more like the way dogs walk you know like you they walk for a, week, a period of time yes dogs are off leash but everybody else the graze the guys who graze is they're on the leash because you have to keep their desire of eating grass yes. every two steps how do you keep a dog with you off of a leash. Uh, well, it's about him understanding or she understanding rules, boundaries, limitations. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Homeless people do it all the time. Which I notice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not that it's impossible. It's right. actually natural and normal. Right. It's just in America, uh, the only people who does that off leash thing is the homeless. Right, because they're like, we're not going to spend money on a leash. Like, we need that no, money. No, no, the thing is they focus on trust, respect, love. And, right. mo- and most of my clients focus only on affection. Right, you which is it? me. I'm like, I just love you so much. You're like, you're a good girl. That's yeah, too common. Much. Yeah, just so much But love. that creates excitement. So it, yeah. and then when they smell things in the floor and they see things running, and then that's more excitement. So what you did right now is excite the brain to the ears. Right. And then when they see something running, they excite uh, the brain to the eyes. And when they smell something in the floor, it's ex- excite the brain to the nose. So now everything. 
everything, all the senses are excited. Right. And they're so like, they're going to go here. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want the brain to stay closed, and then you have to represent calmness. Right. And then the brain stays closed. Wow. She was, wow, calmness. I, I don't know if I could do that because I'm not you a very can. calm person. <laughs> you can. I'm like such, a hyper, per- I'm such a hyper person. I'm like, ah, that's probably why my dogs are like, just probably why she's neurotic, probably for me, huh? Is that what happens? But, but don't you practice uh, calmness? I do. I practice. Uh, I I like chill out. I try yeah. to chill out. I take some CBD and calm down. <laughs> I have to medicate myself okay, to calm okay, down. Okay. But you know, it works. It works. Yeah, yeah. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. We are going to take a quick break. We are here with Caesar Milan. And stay tuned for more Worse Firsts. So I love getting mail. I don't know about you guys, but I love getting mail. When I see a package come in the mail with my name on it, I'm like, ooh, what could this be? Even if it's like something stupid like toilet paper, I'm like, oh, rad, it's toilet paper. But you know, the best thing about getting mail is when it's something that you actually want. So there's this company called FabFitFun. I'm sure you guys have heard of them. They're all over. You know, it's a really cool box that comes seasonally. So spring, summer, winter, fall. You get this box four times a year. And it's basically full of amazing products, full-size products. And I'm talking about like real deal stuff, not little tchotchke samples of stuff. I'm talking about like the full thing. And it's like, you know, beauty, fitness, fashion, lifestyle, has everything you're interested in, all the newest, greatest stuff, scarves, sunglasses, jewelry. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. And it's so exciting. It's like this box of, of, it's like Christmas four times a year. Let's put it that way. So I love it. It's $49.99, four times a year, but everything in the box is worth over $200. So it's like a total deal. And if you love surprising yourself or if you want to surprise a friend or a girlfriend, it's a really great gift. Um, And for you guys, you get $10 off your first box from FabFitFun. So you'll head over to FabFitFun.com and enter the promo code FIRSTS, that's F-I-R-S-T-S, FIRSTS, to get $10 off your first box. Fab Fit Fun box. I mean, it's totally worth it. It's a great gift to surprise people with or surprise yourself with. You know, oh, I ordered this for me. <laughs> Who knew? Um, yeah, I do it. I love it. It's exciting. And uh, the stuff in there is awesome. And it's a great thing. You know, if you don't like something in there, you give it to a friend or whatever. But I've never gotten anything in there that I didn't like. And it's a great way to discover new products. So if you're into this sort of thing and there's, you know, you want to get a present for yourself or for somebody else, this is a great way to do it. And you can head over to fabfitfun.com and enter the promo code firsts f-i-r-s-t-s for ten dollars off enjoy hello worst firsters thanks for listening to this podcast uh i know i talk a lot about my anxiety on here sorry about that guys it's always a constant thing that's on my mind and i'm always trying to discover new products and new ways to help you guys uh anybody else that struggles with the same thing that i do and i know a lot of you listeners i've told about cbd and cbd products it's not weed you're not going to get high it doesn't have thc in it unless you specifically want that um cbd is a derivative of that and it's basically all of the health benefits from you you get get from a cannabis plant so they have pain relief anxiety sleep relief whatever but this company modern okay that's m-d-r-n cbd.com has kind of upped the game a little bit for cbd um basically if you go to their website md rncbd.com they have a full breakdown of what is in your cbd products these are a hundred percent lab tested results of each of the cbd products on their site and full transparency of what is in these products so you're not buying something and going oh i'm taking this uh, full spectrum cbd but i mean what is exactly in this it just says full spectrum cbd what does that mean so on the website at moderncbd.com, it'll tell you everything you need to know. So if you're buying it for sleep or for pain relief or whatever, I really suggest you know giving CBD a try. It's a lot better than, um, I think, taking a, a pain pill or benzos because those are highly addictive. So why not try the natural route first, um, in my opinion? And uh, so it's really nice. Uh, this company is offering 30% off for my listeners plus free shipping. So if you're someone that likes CBD, this is a great deal. CBD is... Um, you know, a great way to help with all sorts of ailments in life uh, if you don't want to take traditional medicine. And uh, so you head to Modern CBD, that's MDRNCBD.com with the promo code WORST, W O R S T, for your 30% off your CBD. I mean, why not try it today? You get free shipping and 30% off again at Modern MDRNCBD.com for 30% off 
using the promo code WORST, W-O-R-S-T. And you know what? Give it a try. If you're in pain, you can't sleep, you had anxiety, why not give this a shot and see how it makes you feel? Good luck. Da, 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 da. Okay, I wish you guys could smell me right now because I smell so good. It's actually crazy. And I, my favorite thing is when I walk past someone and they smell amazing and I, oh, I go up to people. I do. I'm that person. And I go, what are you wearing? I have to know because I love things that smell good. I love smelling good. I love people that smell good. I'm sure you like smelling good. So I was spending so much money on perfume because I like to smell good, but I don't like to smell like the same thing every day because I'm like, oh, then it's like, you know, kind of boring. You smell like the same thing every day. It's, you know, your spouse gets used to it or your partner gets used to it or your dog gets used to it. And they're, it's not that special anymore. So I was like, how do I smell like different nice perfume every day without spending a ton of money? And my friend was like, you got to check out this company called Scentbird. It's crazy. They come out with these cute little spray bottles. They're like little cylindrical spray bottles that come in all different cool colors. And they come in a little velvet patch. They make perfume and cologne. So it's not just for women, guys. And they carry over like 200, I'm sorry, more more than 450 designers. And I'm talking about like, not, not designers you've never heard of. I'm talking about like Dolce & Gabbana, Cartier, Glossier, Gucci, Calvin Klein, like all these dope perfumes and colognes that you can go to scentbird.com, that's S-C-E-N-T, bird.com, slash worst, W-O-R-S-T, and you can try your first perfume from them for $7.50, okay? You enter the promo code WORST at checkout, so you go to Scentbird, that's S-C-E-N-T, bird.com, slash WORST, and enter WORST at checkout, and you get to try your first perfume or cologne for only $7.50. I mean, thinking about how much these perfumes and colognes cost, that's a bargain. And the cool thing about it is that their spray bottles have about 120 sprays in them. So if you spray like, you know, a couple sprays every day that like lasts you such a long time, it's better than the little, you know, free samples and it's better than buying a huge bottle that ends up going stale. So I love this company. You can go on and take a fragrance quiz on their website and uh, they tell you, they give you a list of fragrances they think you'd like, you know, based on your tastes. And it's just been really fun for me. So I've gotten a bunch of different um, perfumes from them that I love. And so I can carry them in my purse. They, like I said, they come in a cute little pouch or you don't have to use the pouch, but it's like these really cute spray bottles. They're about this big, um, showing about like six inches. And they're great. And they hold like a decent amount of perfume. And then that way you're not spending as much money on perfume, but you're still getting the designer perfumes that you love. So if you're into this kind of thing for perfume or cologne, head over to scentbird.com. That's S-C-E-N-T, bird.com, slash worst, and enter the promo code worst, W-O-R-S-T, for getting your first perfume or cologne for only $7.50, and you can get 50% off your first month. Enjoy. Guys, we are back with Caesar Milan on Worst First. We're talking all things animals. Guys, I'm just like picking his brain right now because I'm just so obsessed with animals and I just wish I was him. I'm so jealous of his <laughs> life. He goes for walks with his alpacas and his dogs and his and his geese and his pigs and they all <laughs> and they all hang out. And I'm yes, just and I'm you. so jealous. Like that's my life goal. So uh don't mind me. I'm just talking about it like crazy right now. Yeah. But he's gonna tell us a, a story about rescuing uh, an animal, which is so interesting. I'm excited to hear about. So I'll let you take it away. Well, you know, I um, unfortunately, here in LA, we got the earthquakes and we got yes. the fires. Yes. You know, unfortunately, yes. so every once in a while, we got the mudslide and all of that stuff. Right. And and so the the past Malibu fires, uh, we got to rescue um, a, a girl named Malibu. I name her Malibu, mm-hmm. and she was a a, a llama. A llama. Uh huh. Where was she? She was in. I don't know. Who, I don't. I don't know where she was. I just became the place where I host them. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. And then it's rescue. You know, amazing rescue people who go, who go into the trenches and 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 then see because a lot of people just abandon their homes uh-huh. with the animals in it. Right, which is so horrible. Why They're would not you prepare. not? I took my freaking birds to a hotel. I was like, I don't care. They're parakeets. People were like, they're pissed par. I'm like, no, they're my pets. I'm taking them. The thing is, not a lot of people are prepared. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're not thinking earthquakes. They're not thinking nothing like that. So. Right. Right. They're not prepared. So when this uh, catastrophe happened, they left. They left all these animals they behind. They left the llama in the fire. Mm, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's no. that's pretty bad. You know. Yeah. That's. Horrible. And so so um, 
Um, so how Malibu. did you find out someone called you and said, hey, there's this Yes, mama. we uh, put on Instagram, hey, you guys need any uh, help. Uh, help. Uh, right. We're here to offer house, right. home. Right. You know, so, so nice. immediately, immediately, like somebody called and I said, yeah, we have a llama and we have uh, pigs and we have uh, like 30 or something dogs. And Jeez. Yeah, like 40 or something. It's the most <laughs> beautiful thing in the world. Wow. If you have never walk with dogs, you have to do it. Oh, I, ha- yeah. I raised a little duck. I no, but like a pack, of dogs. Oh, not a pack of dogs. Oh, it's no, the no, most no. beautiful yeah. thing. They're just, there's the more uniform uniform uh, uh, kind of species. They just wow. walk so proper, tilt up, and the, everybody does the same thing at the same time. And they weren't scared of you? No. The ducks? No, no. I feel like ducks they, always run away when you go near ducks. They do gather. You yeah. Know, they do gather and yeah. they move in the same direction. How but, do you get a duck to follow you? In the beginning, you actually move them. You know okay, what I mean? You, so, because they're flight animals. So right, in the right, beginning, right. you begin by playing their game. Like herding them. Yes. Okay. Like sheep herding. So yes. you become the border collie and they become the sheep. Right. Right. And then they say, well, this human takes us for a walk and then he, he give us food. Then eventually they start coming to you because oh. then you identify yourself that way. You know, okay. the human who exercise them and then the way and then the human who gives them food. food. So you have to play their game. Right. 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 So Malibu, Ma, Ma, Malibu um, had this fur. I say, why does she smell so bad? Oh no! You know, oh, it's, it's her, man. It's just, it's just her. Okay. They're like, who farted? <laughs> yeah. like, it's not me. It's a freaking it's, it's yeah, the llama. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Nice way to blame it, Caesar. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. You know, and her teeth were super long, so Crazy. they have you, have, you to, have to cut their teeth, you have right? To cut their oh, teeth. You have oh, to file their teeth. Oh. So, so then we start, you know, then we start seeing as she was a little bit neglected, oh. and so we said, let's just, you know, give her a bath, you know, let her make make him feel good, right? And, you know. So we thought that she was well fed. Uh-huh. So <laughs> we begin with the shower, and it smells horrible. Like oh, terrible, yuck. terrible! So why does she smell so How bad? do you shower a llama? Just the same way you shower a dog. Like outside with a hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm like, oh, is there a llama shower that you have? <laughs> right. You know, at Caesar Milan's place, we have a very special uh, situation. We have a llama shower. A llama shower. For the so shower, for like the llama. Grooming for yeah, llamas, yeah. Gro- right. for, grooming for llamas. The I Dalai Lama shower. I love it. And so we start grooming her. Uh huh. Right? So we start taking. So at least she hasn't been groomed for the past five years. At what? least. So that's a lot of a lot Thick of fur. fur. Yeah, yeah, a lot. You know, and then you start shaving, shaving and you start seeing holes. And her skin full of worms. <gasps> yeah. Full you saw of, worms? Oh, well, that's not the hard Living part. in her that's skin? That's not the worst part. Wait, uh, we're, not even, we're not even going. Like white w- worms? Yeah. Ew, like a parasite. Yeah. Like scabies? Is it scabies? What is a scabies? Scabies is like, um, it's like a, a skin infection that dogs and animals can get. It makes all their hair fall out, and it's a parasite. I had a guinea pig that had it. It was really gross. All its well, hair fell out. I guess she did. It was, so okay, so you're shaving, shaving, you're sticking, and then you're saying that this poor girl oh my God, had look, look, look. no fat on her. No fat. So it's just literally the skin uh, on top of a bone. Oh, no. So, yes. Yeah, so, um, was she crying when you were shaving her? No, she was relieved. Probably. She was relieved, like, yes, because, so yeah. So it's a lot of weight for someone who doesn't have <gasps> fat or muscle. Yeah, that she's know, like to, hungry to and carry. starved. Oh, she couldn't eat well because her teeth were, we're too crazy. long. Crazy. How do you cut their teeth? What do you use? Oh, they file them. They the just the vet like comes vet. and file them. Do you put yeah. them under for it or what? So yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially what, for her because they were so long. Right. You can't take, uh, you know, you can't. the vet couldn't come like once a week or anything like that. It has to be done ASAP because she she was not eating. Right. You know. So. Oh my God! So you just you saved this llama's life. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Oh. <laughs> so. Sorry. So, I, just, I dropped my dog in front of the dog. <laughs> in front of the dog whisperer. It was like, an I accident. Lo- it was an I accident. I love animals. <laughs> <laughs> it was an accident. Nina, she wanted some water. I'm sorry. You okay? Oh, she's okay. It's okay. She jumps off the couch all the time. Anyway. So. I know it's bad. Okay. So, so you're shaving the llama. She's shaving the llama. It smells. Terrible, oh, or no. terrible, terrible. She's feeling good. It's like, wow, what a relief. You see what a holes relief. in her skin. So we're taking well. turns, okay? Yeah. That's hot because, you know, the it's machines, nasty. when you're holding the machines, it's heavy. they get hot. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They get hot, so we got to change. Yeah. So between Dana and myself, we start we start doing it. Dana is a uh, uh, girl that helps me at the ranch. Uh-huh. So we finally got, remove everything. Yes. And the smell continued. Oh, no. Well. The worms you got rid of, too? The worms from the top. Okay, and then and then 
uh, llamas normally had a callus over here, like on their like front of their chest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like camels, right? So in this, and so we left it there because we thought we left there. We left that patch there because it well, Don't not that bad. We watched that. And then it slowly um, came off, and then the smell came back. You know, I said, "Why does it smell so bad?" So we laid her on the side, uh-huh. and we took it off. It was a hole full of maggots, full like like. Brittany, it was a it was tunnels inside her skin, going all over the place. Uh, inside her thing. So, full of maggots? Like this tunnels. This poor llama is like, alive. Is alive. With so maggots. That, it was eating her alive. Oh my God. So all this thing was eating her alive. This poor thing. Yeah, it was eating. So oh you take gosh. this thing off <gasps> and just a big hole right here in the chest. Of course, you say, well, that's big neglection. You know, that's huge. 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 huge Who neglect- lets that happen to their animal? So it did happen. It, it so happened. Someone's llama in Malibu. Mm-hmm. Freaking assholes. They're like, yeah. all I like to do is surf and live in my big house, and I got a llama, but I don't take care of it. Oh, wow. So, what do you do? How do you heal the, the llama? We did our best. Okay. She, she didn't make it. She, uh, she away. lived with us for like two months. Uh-huh. You know, she was definitely uh, with the other llamas. Uh, um, you know, trying you, to. Were you able to get the worms out or not? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, we take we took away all the worms. We yeah. definitely did that part, but yeah. her immune system was very weak. Done. Yeah. Uh, her body couldn't make it anymore. But she, we give her a a very um, honorable uh, way of you know passing, and yeah. she she was loved. Was and she, she eating? Felt did she eat? Very bit, very little, little. Very minimal. She was kind of probably already. She was, like, yeah. Dying. You can see, like you know, she was woggling, boggling oh a lot. God. She had worms living in her body. No wonder, like you can't really survive that. That's kind of crazy. You tr- and you try. I don't know how she stayed. Or? Yeah, because I'm, that fur was was at least five years old. We asked the vet, bear, you know, how how long you think is this? Because I don't know much about llama. I just had this right. new, new llamas that, that I have right. for the past four or five years. So, this is like a five year five year worth of fur wow. on this on this poor animal, and the teeth were long. As, oh so, my god! So it was really really bad, you know. So that's really something that uh, as a rescuer, that's heartbreaking. Uh, that was uh, one of the worst things I, I saw. And with Rio, my Macau, the Macau, they came from the same house, by the way. The bird came from the same mm-hmm. house as the so llama. So they had a lot of like bumps and things and and the face. So. What? Mm-hmm. Somebody just left their bird. A bird's not hard to take with you. Wow. Right. Where was the bird? Was he just sitting Inside on a tree? In a cage. In, in a cage? Yeah. They left him in a cage. They didn't even let him go to try to escape the fire? She, well, they cut their, fed, their their wings. Oh, so she wouldn't have been able to fly anyway. No. Yeah, yeah. I no, know. no. But no, Rio, Rio, um, you know, Rio's with me. Yeah, she lives she's with me doing at great. my house. She's doing fantastic. And, um, you know, she lives in a beautiful home in Encino. And, wow. And, and what happened to, to her ranch. bumps? We take care of them. And what we were definitely, they? We took care of uh, 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 Malibu as well. You know, we yeah, bring the bed and all can. of that. Yeah. And then, I don't know, it's just, it's like water that grew in her, wow. in her head, oh like little gosh. bumps. You know? And but they drained them and now she's okay. We drain them Gone. and so on, so on you have to open it up and take something in from it. I never had a macaw in my life. Yeah, I've never heard of I've heard, I mean I heard of birds like pulling their feathers but out and stuff. When when I met her, I mean this is not the worst thing, but that way this is the most beautiful thing because when we met for the first time, uh her beak and my nose came together. Really? So we went like this. And he said, I love her. And she didn't try to bite you? No. And my my, my girlfriend actually tried to get me a Macau on my birthday many, many years ago, uh-huh. and we went at it because that was a male. And she and that guy fell in love with her. And hated you. And like, yes, I yes. just came from Singapore, and I went into my room, and she, she's, you know, having a old, old doubt, and yeah. has me, has a, yeah. the, my Look, gift. Look, babe, I got you this bird. <laughs> Look, it, bites, it bites your face off. Your, yeah. Oh, God, and the, my, happy this is, birthday. Ah! <laughs> Ah, You're missing a finger. <laughs> this is my birthday gift. Uh, my finger's missing yeah, now. As oh soon as my I ent- god! I have to fight with this guy, no. a Macau guy, so I can get my girl back. He lays in bed next to your girlfriend. <laughs> you can't even get in the bed. He's all. Ah! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, I mean, birds she would are, tell you a better birds story. Birds are crazy like that. But they protect their. Thing, yes, you they're know what smart. I mean? So she, he, he definitely fell in love with her really fast. Oh, wow! Just like Rio and I fell in love really, really fast. I didn't know she was a female. 
Because, you know, with birds, you have to do like a blood test. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And so tell. you don't know if it's a male or a female. Right. Like you say, just, I just looks, I don't fall in love with guys. Yeah. Like, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. My thing is fall in love with you, girls, right? Yes. So she's a girl. She no, well, you have to make sure. I just feel it. You know, when my kids, you know, when, when my, my ex had my kids, I knew they were boys. Really? You know, yes. When she was pregnant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew You're that the energy baby was a bear too. What's the energy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's uh, to me it's a feminine energy, masculine energy, so I know. Right. And and um some female dogs have masculine energy and they're super She strong. humps the boy dog that we have. It doesn't mean that's fit. It doesn't that's that's, that's Nina. <laughs> Nina, what do you do? She's all, you drop me, bitch. She's like, <laughs> she's, she's looking at me look like, at me. she's like, you've never dropped me before, yeah. and you dropped me. Yeah. Oh my god, come here. See, she barks whenever someone comes in the room, or in our house, we have a a phone that rings when someone's at our door, mm -hmm. and they bark like crazy because they know that means someone's here. It's how you move to the door. Yeah, I walk slowly. Yeah, but I don't run. Hey, stop! Hey, hold uh, on, babe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's the whole rit it's rituals. Uh -huh. So in your life, you're gonna have formulas, rituals, and symbols. Right. So it's, it's it's how you address them. So if you don't see it, you still have them. Right. Everybody has formulas. Uh -huh. Everybody have rituals, and they have symbols. And you know how do, what I mean? and how do you um, when they're barking? When I'm going to the door and they're barking, what do I say to them? But the best thing is not to address the ears of a dog. Because, okay. You know, when you're saying things, you're right. trying to convince the dog through the ears. Right, which is not going to work. But that's not how they They work function. with their nose, you said. Right. So, so the right thing to do when the when the brain is barking ah, yeah. is to bring scent right away, redirect them, and then ask them to go into a relaxed state, and then you give them something. Whoa. So it's the nose. 60% of the brain is controlled by the nose. Everybody wants to control the ears and the eyes. Eyes control 15% uh -huh. and ears control 25%. So when you do ears and eyes, it's only 40% of the brain. Wow. That's why, you know, when, when a dog smells something, he takes off. And even he says, come here. Go. They can't he hear you. you. Yeah, yeah, 60% yeah. of the brain is already engaged. Wow. Like when humans are engaged with their craziness, they can't hear you. Right, right, right. The brain is already engaged. Right. You understand? Right. So, so when people so you panic, gotta put like a pastrami sandwich in front of them, bring them back. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a full pastrami sandwich, <laughs> but it can be the scent of right. something. Something they like. That's right. So if they're barking, I have like a treat or something. I distract them. A treat, uh, a like the. Idea. It has to be something smelly. Like okay. mo most of the time, like a treat doesn't have the natural smell. Like okay. that's what bacon is so like powerful. That's what cheese is so powerful. Right. Why? Because it's the smell. It's not what they're gonna intake. Right. It's the smell. So if I so if they're barking, I have a piece of bacon and you I just you just wave it. You and wave. that'll stop them from barking. But they're gonna redirect. Yes. It's like. So how do we get that? And then if so, so the sound is just makes us excited. That's right. What, you see what I mean? So the brain is just reacting of a sound, and then because it move, the human moves to it, and then they go to the door and arrive before the human. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. they learn the pattern. Right, right. So if you want the dog to actually stop this un unhealthy pattern, the, the right thing to do is to address the nose, so then you can tell the dog to stay so he can never follow you towards the door. Whoa. So the dog, okay, so I, I give you an example. Okay. How this is real. There is, uh, there is uh, dogs who are trained to find drugs. Right. And there is dogs who are trained to find bombs. Right. And they're being trained the same way. Right. Is the nose. The nose. Right. right. So, but the bomb, the drug dog is allowed to bark. The bomb dog is not allowed to bark. So most dogs are trained like a drug dog. Right. <laughs> you see what right. I mean? For the door. Right. So, but if a dog is going to learn to find a bomb the same way he's learned to find drugs, but he's been asked not to bark, why people don't do that? Right. How do? That's the thing. Like, it's so weird. Like, I guess because they know when the when the door opens, there's a someone coming that they don't know. And then they, they stand behind me and bark. So it's like they're not going to the door. They're just like. They're followers. They're, they're followers. followers. Yeah, that's, you're so gonna, that's, that's good. But yeah. but but you can't. What, what you're saying is I can't interrupt the brain while it's barking. Yeah. So the good thing is my dogs are naturally followers. Yeah. The bad thing is I don't know how to influence my dog to go from barking to stop. Right. I know. I need to learn to do yeah, that. Yeah, I teach you that. Thanks. He's going to come over this Saturday. Like I said, you guys, you have to stay tuned for the YouTube uh, video. Make sure to subscribe to Caesar's channel, youtube.com slash Caesar Milan. And then you also have a show coming up in Vegas. Vegas. First residency that I'm what? doing. How has that happened? Were you going to do a live dog whisper show? Well, I always done. I, I have done a live shows my, my whole entire career. I this is more that. about inspiring people. You okay. know, I, I think a lot of people want to know my, my story, where I came from, yes. how I came from. And, yes. 
and how I was, I was able to uh, achieve uh, what I am. So that's what I'm going to talk. You know, yes. I'm, I'm going to, especially right now, you know, the, what's happening in our country with the whole immigration thing. So now all immigrants are bad. Mm, no, you know, so I want to be part of the uh, inspiration aspect of it. And, and yeah. for people, to, just like the the way I inspire people to see breeds, you know, it's not the breed, it's the human behind the We're dog. We're all human, guys. Yeah, yeah. We are all human beings. Yeah. That's the thing I think people forget. Yes. You know, we may speak different languages, we may have different skin colors, but we all bleed blood. We are 90% the same. It's kind of, it's just really heartbreaking. And, and it's important, you know, there are uh, uh, people with passion, people with faith, people with uh, different ideas get a chance to, it's like a dog park, you know, everybody has to bark. It's a dog it's park. It's a dog park. Life so is a, a dog new, park. It's Aww. a new dog park where everybody, it's not one one bark now, it's as many different kinds of barks, you right. know what I mean? So for dog people, that uh, makes a lot of sense because you know the dachshund people want their bark, their little dachshunds to bark, the mm -hmm. Rottweiler people want their, yeah, so th everybody. what that means, everybody's pitching in to, to create the environment that everybody wants, which is harmony and balance, you know? So so the show is about definitely inspiring uh, people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my first time, so I'm gonna leave it all on stage. And I think you're gonna be an amazing, you're an amazing <clears throat> speaker. I like love having you on the podcast. Thank you're, you. you're you've been an amazing speaker, and you have you're so good at talking and explaining things. Like I really like. When can people start getting tickets for the show? Oh, they can go on my Instagram and they can uh, okay. uh, Caesar's Way. S so Caesar's Way. Caesar's Way. And that's spell it out for people because people C -E -S -A -R, don't know how to spell Caesar. C e s a r. You're right. You're right. Say awesome. <laughs> like, is it like a Caesar salad? Because yep. I love those. <laughs> I love um, those. So spell it out for people. C e s a r w a y. W a y. Caesar. Yes. Caesar's, Caesar's Way. way. Mm -hmm. So there's an S. Mm -hmm. So e c e s a r s w a y. That's right. Okay, so Instagram.com, guys. Make sure to go check out Caesar, and he. You, you've been such an incredible guest today, and Thank I'm you. so excited to have you over my house this weekend with Tommy. Tommy actually texted me, "Tell Caesar hi," and I said, "Do you know him?" He goes, "No, I'm just really excited to meet him." <laughs> I was like, "Are you guys friends That's or something good. that you That's didn't tell good. me?" It's... He's so excited. He's like, they, "He needs to train these crazy dogs." It's not I'm the like, dog. Are they that crazy though? Be honest. Is she crazy? You think? No, no she's no, okay. No. No, listen, I never met a crazy dog. I met a yeah. lot of crazy people. Hey, all right, everybody, that's me. Yeah, people, no, I, and that's what's so funny is I think that her neur neuroticness is from me because I'm neurotic. So I think like her nervous, shy, weird behavior comes from me because I have like anxiety. So I think that she now has it. Yeah, and that's probably your why. vibe is yeah. LA vibe, right? Yeah, so, it's, yeah. so if you go to New York, it's a different vibe. If yeah. you go to Florida, it's a different vibe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, and dogs do react ba ba based on the vibe they they live in, right? You know. So uh, again, uh, I come from uh, from Mexico, and uh -huh. dogs in Mexico are skinny, but they don't have psychological problems. Yeah, because they they're just chilling. They just drink tequila they're in all the street. day. Yeah, <laughs> they're like man, life, life is good, man. Yeah, like they're chilling. <laughs> like they're like, I, 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 just freaking drinking tequila, taking siestas. Like life is good. They, they, they live life. They got that's nothing to sure. worry about. Like, no. Why is anybody trying to leave this place? Yeah. It's great. I love it. Have that's you ever so heard Mazatlan? Have you ever heard that uh, uh, Mazatlan is, is is by the beach? No. So all the dogs where I'm from, they're on the beach. They definitely leave that. They just life. hang out. By themselves. They, they hang out, they play by the beach, they go to the mar mercado, and they, you know, whoever's gonna give them the, whatever the leftovers is for that day, but, you know, meat and And that's chicken. how they live. That's how they live. And people take care of them? People just yeah. give them scraps and they live that way? You know, the, my favorite my favorite part of the world where they really treat the dog really nice is in Athens. In so, Athens, Greece? Mm -hmm. That's where my husband was born. So in Athens, uh, the, uh, every 10 blocks, uh, a, a vet takes care of the dogs from that block. So they're all spay and neuter, okay? And then they have a, a community reunion where <laughs> where all the older elderly they they are in charge to feed the dogs. So the dog is super fat, right? Super chubby. Oh but my god! They're a spay and neuter, vac vaccinations, and they get fed. So they they are allowed to go back and and, li and live with the Greeks. And they just live on the streets. They live on their ruins. I mean, they don't go to the, anyone's house. They're not begging. They're just chilling on the Parthenon. They're, not, they're like, hey, what's yeah. up? Anybody got a yeah. sandwich? I'm a Greek. Well, I'm a Greek. <laughs> a chill Greek. I'm what chill. the heck? Yeah, but it's it's con it's controlled by the community, and wow. each each uh, block, each ten blocks, they have their own color color color, and so that belongs to that particular vet. Why so don't something we do that here? I don't know. And they always talk bad about the Greeks. I know, <laughs> you know like the economy Greeks is bad, got it together, but, but right? their empathy and compassion is good. It's huge. You know what I mean? And, yes. and so they actually control population. 
There is no, uh, you know, they're not breeding right. themselves. There's a spay and neuter all of them. And they're so they're left out. to be Greek. Greek you know, eating the, heroes, just <laughs> yeah, hanging out right. on the street, yeah. playing with those little Greek beads. Like, you know, that's amazing. And they know, they know their people who's going to feed them, you know, because mm-hmm. I studied that thing. Yes. You know, I always like, oh, go see, I was uh, looking for dogs. And I, I saw that at a certain time, the dogs will gather at the plaza and they will wait for somebody to feed them. They know. They know. This there is when like, we show up. 5 p.m. They check their little dog yeah. eye watch. They're like, all right, <laughs> they I got their my coffee answer. and their yeah, cigarette, yeah, yeah. like a good Greek. Guys, it's time to go get uh, some sandwiches. <laughs> so Let's all uh, head and over all, and the, and then, and to then they put it right there. Yeah, That's yeah. right. They put it right in front, and everybody's eating. No fight, no nothing. It's like, wow, this Greek got it together. And nobody wants to take the dogs home with them. I'd be like, you come live with me. I take good care no, of you. No, because they're happy. Because they're just happy. Yeah, they're, they're happy. Being I mean, they're part of the society. Right. You know what I mean? They're part of society. And if you go to a restaurant many times they're in the they're in front of the restaurant they're not going inside just they're usually just go over because yeah, they're looking for the warm wow. you know what i mean they just when i went to a greek that time it was it was cold so they just look for the warm and they stay there nobody bothers and nobody says nothing oh, the tourists were fine with it and the owners of the restaurant they're cool with it and nobody's feeding take dogs care or, of them. yes I love they're that. part of the society yeah. Why can't you know? we be like that here in America, you They're guys? They're part of society. See, yeah. Oh, they don't have shelters like we do here. Oh, I yeah. hate that. That's the hardest thing is constantly every day seeing all these dogs in shelters that need to be adopted and rescued. And Well, here we have a problem. Can I say something like my yeah, worst thing out here? Yeah. So the worst thing happened here, uh, me as a dog lover, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna yes. not going to like this part. Yeah. But in, Amer- in America, we have an overpopulation problem. Yeah, okay. why is that? Uh, because we don't adopt spay and neuter campaigns. That's oh. why. Okay, so uh, in America, we euthanize between three to five million dogs and cats a year. So to euthanize each one of them is $100 per dog or per cat. Okay, so make, yeah, do the numbers. So it's a lot of money that we're spending and we have to, to euthanize kill dogs. Animals? So that's worse. Okay, that is the oh worst. So there is money to uh, euthanize and, and to maintain this. Uh, this kind of cycle, yeah. right? But we, we need to adopt spay and neuter campaign because we have an overpopulation right, problem. Right, right. And that is real. So yes. if you don't think it's real, just watch where your tax money goes. Because so that's euthanize. where it's yes. euthanasia. We all participate. So if you yeah. say, I don't you, I don't kill dogs. Well, if, you, if you're paying taxes, you are part of the, because uh, you have to pe- let you know the government know where you want your taxes to be used. And no nobody who loves animals want to use their money to euthanize animals. So we have to definitely come as a country, Together. as a society, understanding. You know, it doesn't have to be forever, but we definitely have to amp it up the whole issue. space. I mean, order. that's a lot of money that we're sp- this tax spending. Money. $100 for th- three million, between f- three and five million dogs, $100 Let's a say it's dog. a million, which is not, okay? That's a that's a low number. Yeah. So just ma- do, do do the math. One million dogs and cats right. for $100, $100 per dog. I'm all, well, I suck at math, so we're going to go ahead and take <laughs> out the calculator it, right it, now. I can't, I can't do it. We're gonna, Listen, we're, when you, when right you surrender a dog into yeah. a shelter, when you surrender a dog to a shelter, they have to hold it for 72 hours. And that's it, right? Okay, so 72 hours. Somebody's getting paid by the, by the hour, right. you know? So you got people who receive your dog, do the paperwork. It's a hundred million dollars. You see, so that's hun- just for a wow. Well, that was probably simple math, and yeah. I had to get out my calculator. That's, that's fine. My math teacher's like, <laughs> that's that's okay. But <laughs> I just add the zeros. Oh, well, which guys. is not. Yeah. We don't euthanize yeah. one million dogs. We okay. euthanize more. A minimum. So five for million, us, five for million five million, dollars. it's five hundred million dollars we're spending a year to kill animals. So that's, that's worse. Talk about worse. Yes, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> So, so we talk about all the countries what they're doing. Yeah, you know, we talk yeah. about what other countries are doing we bad. Be doing that, but, that's but we a have good to do idea. housekeeping here. You know what I mean? That's an awareness that we have to do if we want to be the pack leader of the world, uh, uh, showing empathy and compassion. That is that is one way to understand it and make sure that our next generations understand. You know, Spain or campaigns yeah. are the way to go. Adopting dogs that's the way, to, way go. to go. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody, I just want my own. You know, purebred dogs. That's that's beautiful. But you know, just learn to practice your humanitarian side versus your selfish side. Right. You because right. the next generation need to amp it up. I mean, it, the last generation did a very bad job on polluting the very world. Very bad. So we have to, you know, bring an, a new spirituality. We have to bring a right. new, new unconditional love. You know, we have to bring, you know, common sense back into into society. Yeah, where'd that go? So, common sense. <laughs> so Not you know, window. that's that's one way to show, you know, the the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be measured by the ways animals are treated. That's Gandhi. So how we treat in our animals, we're going to treat humans. Yes. And we're going to treat Mother Nature. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, they're disposable. 
we're not we're not really caring as long as it doesn't don't we don't see it, it it doesn't matter but it matters if spiritually speaking it matters because it's happening in front of us and we're not doing anything about we're it we're just letting know? it happen so that's bad karma heart. it's bad karma that's why i always i carry treats in my car just in case i ever see an abandoned dog or something because i try to like take care of it i don't ever yeah. want to see that happen um I think I think the the hardest thing is is that um, you know th- these there's so many agencies that I think like are you, do you like PETA do you work with PETA are we love they have some good stuff they have some good stuff but yeah. I also like I worry because a lot of the times like these animals like they don't get a chance you know like yeah. they have to they have to put them down because they don't have the places to put them and it's and it's really heartbreaking so I don't know guys if you're ever if you're looking to get a family pet or if you're looking to you know rescue an animal or whatever just think that as like your you know your first option instead of you know I, I don't know it's, it's also sad. You, also they can also you know uh, they can they can volunteer yes you can help yes. you know help and, and you can also yeah. be a help foster parent yeah you know what I mean so if, if you don't if you don't have the time or you don't think you have the yeah. time it's just adopt the uh, the need of helping. Yes. You don't have to adopt a dog yet, but do adopt the need of helping. Yeah. You know I mean? So make it a habit. I you told know? my husband, I was like, I want to I want to foster dogs, and he's like, No. And I was like, Oh, because we already have two. So yeah. he's like, That's enough. We have two two dogs, two turtles, fish, birds. Yeah. He's like, We're good. We're good. Yes. On this. For but those yeah. who are listening to it, uh, uh, you can foster for three days, one day, wow. two days. So the, what happens to that dog that is going to be foster? It becomes more social. Yeah, because he's, he's around people. That's yes, right. yes, yes. So yes. like dogs that are going to work for CNI, uh, CNI dogs that are going to be for a CNI people, uh, they 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 rotate them. Wow. Yes, it's very important so that dog gets used to different humans, different things. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. So it's, it's important. It's important. Yeah. Do you do that through your your company as no, well? No, no, no. You have so many different ways. So many just, different ways to do I it. I want to foster. <laughs> Yeah, there's a million people. Yeah, Nina's yeah, like, what, yeah. what happened? Ah, Caesar, stay calm. Yet. Caesar, yeah. stay calm. <laughs> stay calm, Caesar. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for being here so today. Appreciate it's it. been such, I have so many more questions and things I want to ask you, but we're going to wait till this weekend. Oh. I can't wait. Tommy's going to be on. We're going to be, Tommy and I are going to be having Caesar come over our house, guys. Stay tuned for that's going to be on Caesar's channel. Make sure to subscribe to that. It's youtube.com slash Caesar Milan. Caesar Milan. Um, so make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Stay tuned for uh, Caesar. Oh, she's wagging her tail. <gasps> Yay! Who's that? Go say hi. Go say hi. Yeah, so make sure to stay tuned, guys, and stay tuned for more Worst First. And thank you so much, Caesar, for being here today. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you next week.